Welcome to Hartman Math and my own version of College Week. Uh, today featuring Cal State Fullerton, where my daughter is currently a junior. Uh, before we get to trig applications, review of some trig graphs. Uh, go ahead and pause the video here, work through the warm up questions one and two. All right, number one, period, two pi, actually, I'm sorry, pi for cotangent, pi divided by b, or pi times the reciprocal, so pi times 8 thirds. Phase shift, the advantage of being factored, we're looking right at the phase shift right here. So it's just the 8 pi over 9. If the parentheses had been here, we would have needed to have done C divided by B, but in factored form, we're looking right at it. And the average value, 2 elevenths. Find the cosine function. What is the amplitude? 2. Uh, the period to complete one full cycle, start to end, 3 pi. Phase shift, assume that A is positive, meaning we cannot start here. Or the cosine, we would have to be starting likely here to have A be positive. So the phase shift is this distance right there, 3 pi over 2. And the average value would be our midline at 3. And then the function, putting all this together, easiest to do it in the factored form. We could multiply this out as well to get another acceptable answer. Applications and models. Example number two, find the side of a right triangle. Regulation state the max angle of elevation for the rescue ladder is 72 degrees. The ladder can extend to 84 feet, and the ladder is 10 feet off the ground. What is the maximum safe rescue height? Probably the most important part to all of these is your sketch. So go ahead and sketch with as much detail as you can the situation. Pause here, and then restart it once you have your sketch. All right, we got a building. We got a fire truck. The ladder is 10 feet off the ground. It extends up here at an angle of elevation of 72 degrees, at a length of 84 feet, and an unknown height here. We're talking about this being our triangle. So now it's time to set up the trig equation where we've got our 72 degree angle, we've got opposite, we've got hypotenuse, and that's going to suggest that we're going to use sine. Sine of 72 degrees is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by 84. We get the height equals 84 times the sine of 72 degrees. Now you want to get out your calculator. You want to make sure it's in degree mode as we are using degrees. And type it in just as you see it, 84 sine 72 degrees. And it's going to tell you that it's about 80 feet. Approximately. And then, I don't think that's the answer to our question, because we're talking about how far up the building, and that's just 80 feet from here to here. That's not including this down to the ground. I'm going to add another 10 to that. So the answer is it's about 90 feet of a max safe rescue height that the ladder can get to. Example three, fun side of a right triangle. At a point 280 feet from the base of a factory, the angle of elevation to the bottom of a smokestack, once again, factory, is 31 degrees, and the angle of elevation to the top of that smokestack is 43 degrees. Find the height of the smokestack. Pause here until you have a detailed sketch. Here we go. Hopefully, if you didn't know what the smokestack was, something maybe you could Google. Uh, but it's uh, for factories, uh, especially where I grew up, where you had a, a pulp mill, uh, smoke billing out all the time and did not smell very good at all. 
So here's our situation. We got a couple unknowns. We don't know this and we don't know this. So maybe we start with a couple different variables. Like x for the height of the factory. We're ultimately trying to find the height of the smokestack, but that's not really part or a full side in a right triangle. Right now, we're only dealing with right triangles. And we do have this distance to be 280 feet. So essentially, we're going to have two different equations here. We've got uh, one for the 43 degrees. 40, uh, 43 degrees, we've got adjacent. And then opposite is h and x added together. And then the 31 degrees, it's the x and the 280. So for the, the big one, tangent of 43 degrees, because we're dealing with opposite and adjacent, opposite and adjacent, and then we've got our second triangle, the tangent of 31 degrees is equal to x over 280. So if we solve this one all the way through, multiply both sides by 280, and then subtract x from both sides, we're going to get the height of the smokestack is 280 times the tangent of 43 degrees minus x, whatever x is, here's how we're going to find the x. Multiply both sides by 280 there, and there's our x. So h is 280 tan 43 degrees minus 280 tan 31 degrees. You can type that into your calculator. You're going to get that's about 93 feet for the height of the smokestack. Example number four, find the angle of depression. A fighter jet is flying at an angle of 5,280 feet and is 12 miles away from the aircraft carrier. What is the angle of descent to get from there to our aircraft carrier? Uh, and we are talking about the angle of depression. Uh, so go ahead and sketch the figure. Put in all the details. Pause here back in a moment. All right, so we've got our direct line and angle of depression, just like we're talking about angle of elevation, either one always has a horizontal component to it. So since we're going down, it would be down from the horizontal. So the triangle that we would want is this one with a horizontal side we're talking about this angle right there is the one that we are trying to find. So touching from the horizontal, depressed, pushed down, that's our angle of depression. So whether we're talking about angle of elevation or angle of depression, one of the sides of the triangle is always horizontal. And that would touch the angle, if we're going to call it theta. The other issue that we have is we have two different units here. So it might be that we maybe want to only go in miles, as that is, if you had not recognized, that is one mile. So you have to convert everything to feet or everything to miles. One mile down, 12 miles across. This is the angle that we're trying to find. So which trig function involves, if it's this angle, opposite and adjacent, and that's going to be tangent. So the tangent of theta is opposite divided by adjacent. So to find theta, which is an angle, we're going to have to get rid of tangent. We're going to have to do an inverse trig function, inverse tangent on both sides. So theta will be the inverse tangent of 1 12th. And we're probably going to want this to be not in radians, but in degrees. So make sure your calculator is in degrees. And depending on how much you needed to round, something like 4.76 degrees angle of depression or 4.8 degrees, we want to be fairly exact because we do not want our aircraft and or its pilot uh, to miss the, the deck. All right, and then one concept that comes up from time to time in application problems is the idea of bearing and ties into a lot of navigation stuff, um, 
traveling by boat, by sea, airplane, uh, even at just kind of out in the wilderness. And there's multiple ways of measuring bearings. So this is not the only way, but this is the way that we are going to use in this class. We are going to first begin with a fixed north or south line. So everything will always be in reference to north or to south. So when we see our bearing expressed, we're going to use that letter first. Okay, if we're going up at all on the map, we would start with the capital N. If we we're going down at all, we'd start with capital S. And then we're going to use from that north line or from the south line, the angle that we're bending and then towards which direction. So for example, this one is going to say we're going to go N 73 degrees E as it's bending from the north towards the east. So the way that we write that is north 73 degrees east, and this is the notation that we use. See if you can come up with the, uh, the bearings, uh, the representation for these other two. All right, this one's pretty simple. South 17 degrees towards the west, so S 17 degrees uh, W. And then this one, it's going up, so north 58 degrees towards the west. So it's got to be from the fixed north or south line first. There are other ways of doing it, but this is how we're going to do all of ours. Example number five, a ship leaves port at noon and heads due west at 20 knots. At 1 p.m. the ship changes course to uh, north 26 degrees west. Find the ship's bearing and distance from the port at 3 p.m. Right, before we get to the sketch, a little bit of background knowledge on some nautical concepts. Knots refers to nautical miles per hour. So this is a speed. When we do our sketch, it's probably going to be in terms of distances. So you might need to be able to relate your speed to a distance. All right, go ahead and sketch with a lot of detail. Uh, sketch required. Pause the video here until you're ready. All right, here's what we've got. Our port from the north. We're going to bend up, oh, sorry, we're going to go due west first, 20 knots, meaning 20 nautical miles, and that happens from noon until 1. So, 1 hour, 20 nautical miles per hour, which just means 20 nautical miles traveled. Then we're going to change direction from the north, 26 degrees, bend towards the west, and then we're going to go along that way for uh, same uh, speed from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. So two hours travel at a speed of 20 nautical miles per hour means 40 nautical miles. So we've got that as well. And since this is 26 degrees, this would have to be 64 degrees. And we've got this unknown right triangle here that we're gonna to start to kind of work on. So within here, we've got 64 degrees, we've got a hypotenuse of 40, we need to find x and we need to find y. Trigonometry will do that for us. Adjacent hypotenuse. To find x, we're going to use cosine. And to find y, we're going to use sine. So since we're going to use these calculations further on, we're going to round several decimal points. So you can see we're rounding to the nearest thousandth here, just so we can maintain some exactness. Uh, or a close to being uh, fairly exact. And then uh, for x, we're going to use cosine and same thing. So now by the Pythagorean theorem, we've got x plus another 20. That's one of our sides here. And then the 35.952 by the Pythagorean theorem, we should be able to find d. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If you do that, it's going to be very close to 52 nautical miles. If we need to send like a rescue, helicopter or something, boat stranded from the port 
that's where we, the ship currently is. All right, next, find the bearing from the port to the ship. So from here to there. So what, that means we're going to need to find one of these angles. And beta is the one we need, but alpha is the one that's inside the triangle. So we've just found out that this is 35.952. And in the Pythagorean theorem, you saw that this was 37.535. And this is our unknown angle. So we've got opposite, we've got adjacent. That's a tangent situation for alpha. So the tangent of alpha would be the y over the x plus the 20. And if we do then do inverse tangent, we're going to find alpha. And that's about 43.77 degrees. But we don't really want alpha. We want the one that's touching the north line. We want beta. That's our bearing angle because it's touching the north line. And since the north line and the west line, they're perpendicular, uh, we just need the complement to 43.77. So subtract from 90 degrees, we've got our beta 46.23 degrees. So north bending that far towards the west, that's the bearing that a rescue vessel would have to set to get to our ship if they need it. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.